the Pledge of Allegiance. Today's Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Naomi Vaca and Jasmine Ontiveros, both students at Escontrias. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Next, we'll move to item number three, superintendent's comments. Yes, President Gandra, members of the board, just FYI, Trustee Cynthia Najera is not here today because she is attending the TASA TASB Legislative Conference in, in Austin. Uh, and on, on behalf of the uh, school board and district, Ms. Najera is taking the opportunity to communicate our students' needs and priorities to legislators in Austin. She'll also be receiving an update on legislative activities and proposed bills. So also, even though she's not here, we want to wish her a happy birthday, which she had on February 19th, Ms. Cynthia Najera. Trustee Angelica Rodriguez also had, has a birthday that is coming up on February 25th. So we wish you a very happy birthday, Ms. Rodriguez. We know you are a year younger and wiser. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> happy birthday, Ms. Rodriguez. ¿Cuándo es la quinceañera? On Saturday. <laughs> This year, as many of you all may know, Socorro IZ was selected as an HEB Education in Excellence finalist for the second year in a row. Yesterday, on Monday, the HEB judges flew in from Austin, Texas and visited our amazing school district and met with several of our stakeholders that included the students that included teachers, parents, and just so many community members as part of their competition. And the judges, when they were leaving to catch their flight back to Austin, they were very, very complimentary and impressed by the passion and the dedication of our team and our students. So I greatly appreciate the efforts of our entire community, which is why our school district continues to be recognized as a model district across the state and across the country. I'm very proud and grateful to be part of a, an elite team SISD. And today I'd like to acknowledge a new member to our team. And I know I'm not gonna say this last name correct, so you'll have to help me out. Mr. Arturo Oaxaca, who is our new licensed specialist in school psychology, Mr. Oaxaca. Welcome. Welcome to Team SISD. Coming from Arlington, correct? Arlington, but I know you're a Houston Texan fan and not a Dallas Cowboy fan, right? All right, we're okay. We're all right. <laughs> now, welcome to Team SISD. Also, congratulations to all of our campus teachers of the year and to our elite eight teachers of the year who were selected at today's reception. All of our teachers, Every single one of them, whether they're here or they're back at the campus, they are champions and we appreciate their, their hard work. A uh, fun contest for our students, which is the, called the Battle of the Blue Bonnets, will take place Friday, February 24th here at the DSC, so we're looking forward to that. Good luck to all of our wonderful students who will participate and a huge thank you to all who made that event possible. President Gandara, that concludes my comments. Thank you, sir. Next, we'll move on to item number four, board honors. Mr. Escobar.
Good evening, President Gandara, members of the board, and Superintendent Dr. Espinosa. My name is Daniel Escobar, Chief Communications Officer, and it is my pleasure to introduce tonight's recognitions. If you'll please step down to receive our honorees. Tonight's first recognition is in honor of SISD athletes who won their divisions in the 15th Annual Volunteer After School Sports Program, or VASP, soccer playoffs. These athletes from grades pre-K through six dedicated many hours in after school practices to perfect their technical abilities on the field and advance through the season and playoffs to be crowned champions. We'll begin with our Pee Wees or pre-K division champions from HD Healy Elementary. <laughs> Xavier Sanchez, Itzel Rivera, Scarlett Sanchez, Liliana Escamilla, Ian Gonzalez, Cristabella Duarte, Santiago Ruiz, Josue Estrada, Giovanni Guevara, Luciana Rodriguez, assistant coach is Efren Guevara, and their head coach is Ignacio Sanchez. As the students are gathering for a photo, just a quick note that the pictures taken by our district photographer, Mr. Acavius Largo, will be posted on our district website. There's a photo or camera icon on the bottom right-hand corner to our Smug Mug account. Those pictures will be available for free high-resolution download. Keep smiling, keep smiling. <laughs> All right, congratulations once again. The champions of our minors division, which is kinders in first grade, are from Escontrias Elementary School. They are Elijah Garay, Vivian Garay, Ryan Dominguez, Cheyenne Cadera, Belen Pasillas, Preston Sanchez, Charles Sanchez, Idelfonso Carrera, Ruben Arredondo, Gustavo Salivar, Julian Magallanes, Jaylene Ontiveros, Emiliano Valenzuela, Navea Sejera, Gabriel Baca, Adrian Sainz, Kendra Duran, Angel Ventura, 
Assistant coaches are Judy Garay, Michael Rodriguez, and head coach is Michael Garay. Our champions in the intermediate division, second and third grade, are from John Drugan School. Congratulations to Gael Melgar, Andre Salazar, Pablo Zarate, Alejandro Gonzalez, Montiego Javier Ramos, Luis Lerma, Marcos Rosales, Santiago Dominguez, Samuel Murillo, Mia Suarez, Assistant Coach Arturo Salazar, and Head Coach Victor Gonzalez. once again. Winning the champion in this championship in the seniors division, fourth and fifth grade, are from Mission Ridge Elementary School. Congratulations to Carlos Anchondo, Keira Hernandez, Jonathan Vasquez, Ilan Valdez, 
Brandon Salas. Iber Álvarez. Gael Baragón. Jose Guerrero. Isabel Baragán. Jasmine Rocha. Joshua Muñoz. Ramiro López. Alan Rodríguez. Stephanie Flores. Caitlin Ita. Edwin Medrano. Leslie Perez. Brianna Moreno. And they are led by Coach Emmanuel Malanche. Congratulations once again. The champions in the pros sixth grade division are from Socorro Middle School. Congratulations to Mark Anthony Lopez, Carlos Correro, Estrella Lopez, Irvin Boucher, Gerardo Luján, Angel Avila, Isabela Trujillo, Diego Cruz. Yancy Villalobos, Ricardo Luján, Ruby Caldera, Yahir Mesa, assistant coach is Jose Luis Herrera, and they are led by head coach Lorele Lopez. Congratulations once again. We also want to recognize and thank for their work our district and area coordinators of the VAST program. We have Josie Williams. Alice Venegas. 
Angie Apodaca, and David Ayala. Congratulations and thank you so much. Our second recognition will honor an Eastlake High School student for being a National Center for Women in Technology Award recipient. She is a winner among 24 students in the El Paso area who applied for this award and is being honored for her computing skills, proven leadership ability, academic performance, and plans for a post-secondary education in the field of computer science. From Eastlake High School, congratulations to Victoria Mendoza. Next, we recognize SISD Fine Arts students for being named to the prestigious All-State Choir, Band, Wind Ensemble, and jan Jazz Band Groups. Of the thousands of students across the state who participate and compete in UIL performing arts groups, very few advance through area and regional competi competition, and even less are named All-State Musicians. This year, eight SISD students earned this honor in their respective divisions. They are from America's High School, Michael De La Rosa. His orchestra director is Ms. Adria Dunn. Also from America's High School, Skylar Gallegos. Band director is Henry Vega. From Eastlake High School, Cassandra Biato. <laughs> Choir director is Liliana Labrado. <laughs> From Montwood High School, Guillermo Lopez. <laughs> also from Montwood High School, Matthew Palacios. Another student from Montwood, Julian Saucedo. Their band director is Albert Licon. From Socorro High School, Raul Olivas. Also from Socorro, Sofia Gonzalez. Assistant Band Director is Rebecca Mondrial. And their Band Director is Mark Mumau.
congratulations once again. Our next recognition will honor the America's High School Girls Cross Country Team for winning the 2016-17 16A District Championship. <laughs> the Trailblazers maintained their discipline and dedication all year long by running a minimum of six miles a day to sustain their high achieving record and prepare for the win. In addition to winning the district championship, the team also had three members earn all district honors and qualified for regionals. Congratulations to the Lady Trailblazers. They are Daphne Duran, Andrea Lucero, Priscilla Villalobos, Jackie Aguilar, Victoria Duran, Ana Rodriguez, Yasmin Marquez, Coach Victor Ruiz, and they are led by head coach Ken Lucero. Congratulations once again. Next, we have a special presentation to recognize a Socorro High School tennis, co tennis coach for being selected the 2016 Greater El Paso Tennis Association High School Coach of the Year and the 2016 United States Tennis Association Southwest High School Coach of the Year. His tennis program was selected out of the many programs throughout Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Having coached for more than 12 years, he serves as a mentor and positive role model for current and former athletes, as well as other members in the El Paso area tennis community. Let's hear it for the 2016 Coach of the Year from Socorro High School, Coach Michael Besmek. Our second special presentation will honor an Eastlake High School teacher for being selected as a winner of the Aspir Aspirations in Computing Educator Award given by the National Center for Women in Technology. She was one of some 300 educators throughout the nation to receive the award and the only one to receive the honor in the El Paso region. Congratulations to C Sheila Robles.
Next, we will recognize a Team SIZ principal for being named the 2017 West Texas Speech and Debate Association Principal of the Year. The program recognizes outstanding secondary school principals who have succeeded in providing high quality opportunities for students in speech and debate, as well as demonstrating exemplary contributions to the profession. From East Lake High School, congratulations to Principal Gilbert Martinez. Congratulations once again. <clears throat> Our final recognition will honor the Council on Regional Economic Expansion and Educational Development, or CREED, for partnering with Team SISD in support of our Teacher Dual Credit Scholarship Program. CREED has generously donated $76,000 to pay for Team SISD teachers' certification to teach dual credit courses. This great community investment will benefit our outstanding teachers and countless students who will earn college credits in their classes. With the support of Creed and our community as a whole, SISD will build upon its aggressive, aggressive approach to expand dual credit and advanced academic programs, which has helped students get a head start in college and save their families substantial tuition costs. Last year alone, with our extensive dual credit opportunities at every high school and unique dual credit summer program, Team SISD students earned some 17,000 college credit, credit hours and potentially saved over $6 million in college tuition costs. Joining us tonight to represent Creed are Mr. Dan Olivas. <laughs> Mr. Manny Soto. and Creed Chair, Mr. Richard Castro. Thank you, gentlemen, once again for your contributions. And that concludes our recognitions for this evening. Okay. Yeah, it is kind of hot in here. <laughs> uh, we're working on it. Okay, let's move down to item number six, uh, Board Trustee Business. Consider approval of proclamation for National School Breakfast Week, March 6th through the 10th, 2017. Ms. Chinaski. Good evening, President Gandara, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Every year, the National School Lunch Programs throughout the country declare one week to be recognized as National School Breakfast Week. 
The week is aimed to spotlight breakfast programs and promote breakfast consumption. So Coral Child Nutrition Breakfast Program is revered as one of the country's breakfast champions. In Socorro, we provide breakfast for all students at no cost, breakfast in the classroom for all students from pre-K to eighth grade. High school students are provided up to seven choices of breakfast combos daily, to include Menudo being the favorite on Fridays. Mm. We have serving kiosks at our high schools to allow easy access for our students. One of our great programs we have for our breakfast at our high schools is our second chance breakfast, which allows students who participate in sports, bands, UIL, anything extracurricular in the early mornings, it allows them to come and get breakfast after the first bell. I'm honored to lead such an amazing team of dedicated employees who provide healthy, nutritious breakfast meals to our team SISD students. At this time, I would like to introduce Braden Chinoski, third grade student at Benito Martinez to read the National School Breakfast Week proclamation for your consideration. Whereas the school breakfast program has served our nation admirably since it was permanently established in 1975. And whereas the school breakfast program is dedicated to the health and well-being of our nation's children. And whereas the school breakfast program joins and has been joined through the years by many other excellent child nutrition programs. And whereas there is evidence of continued need for nutrition education and awareness of the value of school nutrition programs. Now, therefore, the Board of Trustees of the Socorro Independent School District do hereby proclaim the week of March 6th through 10th, 2017 as National School Breakfast Week. And I encourage all residents to become aware and concerned about their children's and their own nutrition habits in hope of achieving a more healthful citizenry for today and the future. Thank you. Thank you, Braden. Great job. Thank you. At this time, I ask the board's consideration for this proclamation. Motion Thank to you. approve. Second. So, we have a motion made by Mr. Ayub, second by Mr. Nahira. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go down to item number seven, open forum. Nobody assigned in for open forum. Okay. Let's go down to item eight, district reports, facilities. Mr. Ayington. Good evening, President Gondra, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Beginning on page 13 is the facility report. We met earlier this week, or this, yeah, last week to review the facility report in our facility committee. The first project I have is the aquatic center. Uh, we have uh, been working on that for the last few months. The exterior pool is completed. <laughs> and we have filled it up with the water. Uh, we are continuing to work on one of the slides. Uh, and this week, or last week, we, we began draining the interior pool, and we are beginning to start working on uh, replastering the uh, uh, interior of the pool. Uh, and, I think I, and there's your slide, Mr. Gondola. It's ready to go down. This shows the uh, new play structure on the left, my left, uh, of the, in the shallow part of the pool. Uh, the pool is filled with water. We are balancing the pool with the chemicals and stuff. And then, of course, the other picture on the lower right-hand corner uh, is the uh, exterior slide, and we are continuing to work on that. But uh, the, the exterior pool is complete, 
And like I said, we have moved to the interior of the pool, started draining the competition pool and the multi-purpose pool, and we'll begin our plaster job uh, on those pools once the water is drained. The next, next pro project we're working on is, of course, the uh, HVAC renovations at Scora High School, which has to do with the administration area, the library, and the corridors. Uh, we are continuing to work with our engineers. We had a meeting last week, I mean yesterday, uh, with our staff to go over that project, and we are continuing to work on that, and we will be bringing um, more information to you once we get into that, uh, but that project is, is going. Uh, and hopefully we'll have it completed uh, sometime this summer or as soon as possible. Uh, we're, we're looking at that timeline right now, but our goal is to get it completed in August. The last project is, of course, our new elementary school, uh, the prototypical design. Uh, we've been working with our uh, uh, architect, VLK architect, and their consultants reviewing the uh, uh, plans and, and basically uh, gotten through schematic design and are proceeding into design development. We had a meeting last week with our kitchen consultant to review the cafeteria layout uh, of the new school. We met with our special ed department and all our other curriculum uh, people and, and we have actually have added another unit uh, to this elementary school for the special ed unit. Currently we're sitting at 851 is the maximum capacity uh, with a functional capacity of just under 800, 765. So uh, a little over 108,000 square feet. So it is smaller than Purple Heart because it's not a uh, school that's going to be added to, it, it's strictly an elementary school. Uh, we continue to work on this. Uh, there are some other agenda items later in the board meeting that has to deal with this, uh, but I will answer any questions at this time. Any questions from Mr. Arrington? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arrington. Next we'll have grant report. Ms. Tarnell. Good evening, President Condita, Dr. Espinosa, and members of the Board of Trustees. For tonight's grants update, um, our continuing grants, uh, our Project SMART grant is in its, in its first year of a two-year uh, no-cost extension. Um, I think everything is pretty well uh, going real smoothly there. Our APEN uh, pro program, uh, we've got our student ambassadors, and we have uh, attendance goal of 80 students, contracted students with the Army, and for our first month we reached it this uh, for January, so we're really excited about that. Our special education, um, the, that grant the, for the military connected students, we're, we're going to integrate all of our grant plans together for all of our military grants, and so we're working on doing that there, and also creating a web page. Um, and then the last one, we've got our new military liaison on board. He's doing a great job for us already and helping out at Pebble Hills High School as well, where they really need him. And our Kellogg uh, Foundation, our Win Academy, we are getting the evaluation plan done by the end of this month. Uh, applications awarded, Creed, which already was here this evening for 76,000 for our dual credit. We received that. Uh, we submitted a bunch of applications this past month. Our impact aid for the year is done. Um, and then we did two robotics grants uh, that we're partnering. The, the one, the, the first uh, robotics grant for STEM equity, uh, that was an actual notice of intent and you had to be invited to apply. We already heard back that we have been invited to, a, to the next round for, to apply for that grant. So we will be proceeding, that's due March 21st. Um, and then we did two small grants with Wells Fargo uh, for the fine arts uh, so that we can allow the students um, to do a, a showcase or to do an exhibit at the Art Museum, El Paso Museum of Art, if we get that one funded. And El Paso Museum of Art will partner with us as well for another $1,800 that they have committed. 
Um, and then the other one is for summer art academies at four of our middle schools. Uh, grants awaiting notification, we still haven't heard on any of those. It's probably going to be a while on those last two before, or probably all of them for a while. Applications in progress, the Truancy Prevention and Intervention Grant uh, for two uh, juvenile case managers. We did get that submitted uh, yesterday. And that one is, is for those two positions at 88800 for one year. Uh, then we also are looking at J.J. Watt Foundation uh, for uh, <laughs> uniforms and equipment and, uh, <laughs> and uh, the Texas Workforce Commission. That's a single grant that we're just investigating that one for a standards alignment for adult education. And then I'll, again, I picked up two more grants today, uh, National Endowment of the Arts and another Department of Ed grant that we're looking at as well. Okay, are there any questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, this one on item nine, consent agenda. E1, E1. Item E1. Is that the only one? That's Any other items to be pulled? Need a motion? Motion to approve. Consent agenda with the exception of E1. Second. Motion has been made by Mrs. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Ayub. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Item E1. Mr. Uh, Mr. Gandara, um, I don't know if Mr. Garcia or Ms. Macias wanted to address this. Um, I know we spoke about it last night at Finance, and thank you, uh, you and Ms. Macias and Ms. Olson, for answering my questions today. Um, I wanted to touch base on a couple of things. Uh, by us going into this uh, bid for our athletic apparel, uh, for game day apparel for the students, um, I, I know that there's a rebate tied into this, but th were you all able to assess if overall there will be a cost savings to the district when we do this? We didn't talk about this yesterday, and I don't, I don't mean to catch you if you don't know, but uh, we need to look it up. Yes, uh, President Gantara, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Um, the combination of this solicitation, not only pricing, but in the incentive program, I think some of the cost savings that we are going to take benefit from is that we are allowed to buy practice apparel that is not a name brand, and that's we're going to see some, some savings at that, at that stage. And to, just so I can be clear, so anything that we purchase as far as this athletic apparel um, and, uh, that we ordered through the, this vendor, then consequently, we would get a rebate of 10%, is that correct? Correct, there's certainly some additional incentives if campuses decide to move to one of the selected brands. Okay. But in addition to that, there is an overall percent back to those campuses in regards to apparel or product. Uh, so it depends on, on what the brand the campuses will be selecting but it is a 10% of the overall spend. That's one portion of the incentive package. And we'll be able to buy this over the internet, and so if parents want to augment this or support their, their local sports at their high school and they purchase additional items, do we get any benefit from that? Yes, uh, those transactions that are purchased through a uh, campus portal for staff, for students and parents or community as well, uh, the campuses will see the benefit directly to their, their campus accounts. And then one last question, just for the record. I understand another district then turned into a similar type of thing, but, but they locked in on a brand. But my understanding is one of the problems they have, they can't mix and match. Will we be able to mix and match? Because I understand maybe the cost of shoes is eating them alive. Will we be able to pick and choose so that we get the best pricing? Yes, so uh, this package that we are presenting, uh, we are recommending one vendor, multi-brand, and that's where we see the substantial savings when compared to some of the other contracts around the area. I see. Okay. Question. Mr. Nakara. Mr. Garcia, so prior to this, um, mostly our schools were left um, to negotiate these contracts individually as they made uh, their purchases, uh, correct? So this allows us to consolidate um, I guess basically our negotiating power and not just across our high schools, which, you know, those sports activities do consume a larger portion of the budget, but it also allows us to consolidate 
uh, the other athletic programs, middle school, and also take advantage of this, uh, this bid, this discounted pricing, correct? Correct. So what uh, this solicitation has done is establish a master agreement that all campuses could take advantage of, as well as incentive packages for our middle schools, which in the past, if I recall, they, they were not there. And so our middle schools would also benefit from this as well if, 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 if they do decide to, to, to use this contract. And while our high schools will have to select uh, over the period of three years, and I, 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 I understand from our discussion last night that was a good decision because it allows them to transition. It's not like they have to go out tomorrow and all of a sudden, um, you know, re-equip uh, the entire team, but rather as equipment needs replacement, uh, replenishment, et cetera, they're able to move towards that. So in three years, their game gear, not the practice gear, not, but game gear, um, in order to receive the maximum benefit, they'll have to select from one brand or another and just stick with that brand, correct? You are correct. There is a transition phase in this agreement where we are not uh, required to re-issue uh, uh, new uniforms at the beginning of the contract. So you're, you're, yeah, that's correct, sir. And regardless of which brand they've selected, we've already got the discounted pricing, so our athletic coordinators or the athletic director at each of the high schools or any of the middle schools, they don't have to do any of the negotiation. All they have to do is go to the catalog, make their purchase decisions, and it's a single vendor, so they don't have to negotiate with any vendors anymore, regardless of what brand they choose or what they're buying, they get to take advantage of all of this, correct? Correct, uh, the, 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 the only portion is that those sports that do want customization, then uh, that's something that would have to be discussed at that time. Yeah, but we've got pricing for that as well, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And then our middle schools at this point, I know our middle schools aren't going to go to, um, you know, select between the name branded information, but should they choose, right, they could also buy uh, name brand, but it also includes um, discounted pricing for the apparel that traditionally our um, middle schools purchase, which is typically not, you know, the name brand, but, but other um, equipment like Russell or Wilson or anybody else. So we get discounted pricing there as well. They're not forced into buying the more, more expensive stuff, which you, I know. You are correct, sir. Okay, it was one of the drawbacks to, to some of the other agreements that, that uh, uh, be, become familiar with. Okay. Well, all around sounds like a good deal. <coughs> yep. Yeah. Mr. Adam, thank you. Um, the rebates, are they going to come to the district? to see, you know, that we don't lose the yearly rebate because it's only valid for one year. So we need to control somehow that those rebates are being used. Is that guy going to come to the district or directly to the high school? That'll go directly to the high school to our students. So that was a discussion that, was, that we had during the committee and we want to ensure that our students benefit from those, um, from that information or from the incentives that we get, so it'll go right back to the campuses. Thank you. Well, but, oh, I'm sorry. Go That's ahead. right. Yeah. But, but that was a good time. Were we able to uh, look up or discuss with them if we can roll over the, the credit? Because, yeah, if, if we end up buying a bunch of football jerseys in June, anticipating that, you know, we're going to use them in, in July or August, September time frame, we don't want to lose that, that credit, that, that rebate. Are we going to be able to roll that over for a period of time so that we can still take advantage of it? No. Uh, all the incentive programs must be used during that contract year. And so it's crucial that it's awarded so that we start moving forward with the timelines that are in place to order fall uniforms, spring uniforms, and so forth. And so uh, some incentives are going to be up front. Others are going to be throughout the uh, accumulation of the total purchases but they must be used within that contract year. It's not necessarily a school year, right. it's a contract year. What's our contract year? So as soon as it gets approved, we'll go we ahead and execute, and, <coughs> which means some rebates will be available during the January timeframe to order for fall sports. Mr. Gandhara. Mr. Gandhara. Mr. Garcia, would those rebates be split evenly amongst the sports teams? And because, yeah, the football team and we don't want to leave out the tennis team or the golf team. That's exactly right. Whenever we had our conversation, we're going to bring in our principals, and that's why it's going to be campus-based, and we're going to develop that plan, and we're going to put it into regulation so that it is um, clear, and that way every, everybody benefits 
from this incentive that we have. President Gandra. Um, I do want to thank Mr. Garcia and Ms. Macias team uh, because this is a big decision and they had a meeting with all the athletic uh, coordinators from the different high schools and uh, some other additional coaches because uh, we involve, you know, when this making a big decision like this, we don't just not top down, we want to hear get input and I believe uh, you want to take 10, 15 seconds to describe how that meeting went. We did is we actually um, it was that democratic process every single sport chose their representative so we had a representative for every sport here in our district and even though we had all of the athletic coordinators there there was one voice for them that way it was completely um, consistent and I do want to thank our finance department they did a great job very organized and everybody's voice was heard it was not just one meeting it was multiple meetings that we had with the information and um, and it was it was quite informative, please. Sure, you know, uh, what I'd like to add to that is certainly, you know, thank the, uh, the athletic departments for, for taking part in this, but we, we, we took it uh, several steps that allowed within the procurement method. We, we had finalists, we asked them to make presentations. We wanted to make sure that we saw everything that was presented. And, and because of that process, I, I think that we were able to select not only I think around the, around the state, you see uh, exclusive contracts with a particular brand, and at, at this time, SISD did not take that step. Uh, we felt that it wasn't in the right interest at this moment, and so the recommendation is to make a vendor, one vendor award with multiple brands. Question. Mr. Nahara. Mr. Garcia, the, the bid um, is, is it a one-year contract with subsequent renewals or how does that run? Yeah, uh, we wrote our contract as one year with four one year extensions. Uh, keep in mind that uh, within the contract we also have that three year implementation plan. So right. depending if, if certainly we have asked our coaches to make sure that we uh, do a vendor performance because if we do have any concerns or issues that we note that. And, and because we will have a master agreement in place that we want individuals to sign in the past it was just just a PO process uh, right. we feel that we should have uh, the mechanism to to address um, some of those you know uh, cancel cancel clauses or any anything else that might come yeah it'd be um it'd be good because I, I I think I share mr. Ayub's concern um, where if the contract what what month are we in February um, if you know the contract let's say we sign the contract March 31st, you know, and then all of a sudden uh, somebody is making, I can't even uh, think of a sport, of course, it's gonna run through the summer, but, but okay, let's say that we're preparing for football by making the purchases in preparation for the fall in March, and all of a sudden we've got that 10% that rebate, you know, from uh, a program that uses a lot of equipment and the contract renews March 31st, and we're making our purchases in March 31st, you know, with that renewal provision, we should be able to carry over, you know, that now if we don't renew the contract, I, you know, completely understand why they would say, okay, no, your rebate's gone. But if we do, you know, I, I would hope that they wouldn't force us into an immediate purchasing decision because, you know, just to, due to the timing. So hopefully that's something that we can still um, get an understanding at least from them be able to do that. Sure, and so we'll bring in the vendor to, to discuss those, those details, and certainly we will get with uh, legal to, to make sure that language is incorporated into the agreement. I think, I don't remember off the top of my head, Mr. Garcia, but um, at the time of the renewal, um, does it come back to the board next uh, year at the same time for renewal, or is it just? As all of our contracts, we indicate during the initial uh, unless the board decides that this is one of those contracts that we would really <coughs> all want to see, we, we can we can address, we can take it. I'd certainly be interested in seeing this one back next year to um, review the performance, to make sure that the benefits are there, and then to understand exactly, you know, how much uh, the rebates were, and then, uh, you know, what, what the distribution was, et cetera. So. At least walk it through finance. Right, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gandra. Mr. Gabbard. Mr. Garcia, I noticed on our board package, the total estimated cost was 500000 But on our, on our, um, handout. 
planned agenda here, it says price will be determined at a later date. Yeah, so what happened is that we provided a placeholder on the initial packet because we did our, our final uh, review and presentation, I believe it was last week. And so at the time we wanted to make sure that there was a placeholder. And so the, the attachment that you have today is after the, after the finalists were presented and evaluation was done. And so you also have reports comparing last year to this year. And, and, as, and as all solicitations that come to the board, is a, it's an estimate. Uh, if we need to request for more funding, then we will do that at, at the time. Um, but as you can see, the numbers, what we did is that we, we, we took an average of what it would be just for the apparel portion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Abe, second by Mr. Nakara. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Well, now to item number 10, new business. <clears throat> Consider approval of notice of separation and incentive, Mr. Campoya. <coughs> Good evening, President Gandara, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board, Rudy Campoya, Chief Human Resources Officer for the School District. Once again, um, coming before you to request approval, uh, the district would like to offer a separation incentive for classroom teachers, administrators, or other professional exempt staff that um, are assigned to a school site who plan to voluntarily resign their position within SISD at the end of the 2016-17 contract year. If approved tonight, we will offer an incentive of $500 to the first 75 employees in the above mentioned categories who submit their written notice of separation on or before March 31st, 2017. With your approval, notices will be delivered tomorrow via email to all those employees at school sites with a deadline of uh, March 31st. The total financial impact for doing this is a total of 37,500 should all 75 employees take advantage of this opportunity. At this time, administration recommends consideration and approval of this item as presented. Question. Question. Mr. Nakeda. Mr. Campoya, so um, notice of separation. So if I'm a teacher and I just want to resign because I want to work somewhere else, that's valid as well? Yes, sir. Okay. They would just have to submit it by March 31st, and it would be effective at the end of the school year. Okay. Uh, well, Mr. Campoya, I, I certainly appreciate HR's um, uh, initiative and in coming early uh, with this. I know it certainly um, allows us to plan effectively for the next year, you know, right alongside as, as we're planning for um, the budget. I, that I can recall, I think this is the third year uh, that we've done this, but it certainly allows us to staff appropriately and hire. I mean, if they resign by March 31st, we still have April and May to try and find replacements, where instead, if someone waits until July as the school year is beginning, then we're scrambling trying to find teachers. Um, and while it does come with the cost, certainly the cost of trying to find a replacement as school has already started is higher, not to mention the fact that there's probably uh, learning that suffers because exactly. we're trying to find replacements at that time rather than being able to uh, plan appropriately. So I uh, once again commend your staff for uh, bringing this at a time that allows us to plan. Thank you. Questions? Motion to approve? Second. A motion made by Mr. Nagra, second by Mrs. Rodriguez. Any further discussion? Mm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Go to item B. Consider approval of proposed changes to Socorro IS SISD health plan. Good evening, Board President Gandara, Dr. Espinosa, and members of the board. I <coughs> before you to review a brief summary of the information that has been brought forth uh, to the committee and to review during, that we reviewed during the last uh, three workshops. <coughs> during the first workshop, <clears throat> excuse me, we were requested, administration was requested to bring forth a comparison in terms of the amount that was being contributed by school districts in the area. And uh, again, during that work, first workshop, held on December the 12th, we were able to bring over information in regard to what 
Clint ISD, El Paso ISD, and Isleta ISD are con currently contributing uh, per employee, per eligible benefit em employee per month. In addition to that, we made some updates in terms of the increase or the numbers that we will be considering if we were to uh, increase the employee rate by $10 a month or by $20 a month. And again, I'm going to try to highlight some of the points that were reviewed at each workshop. Following that, we were requested to bring over information in regard to uh, cost utilization or what we are experiencing as a group. How is it that we're spending our money? So we uh, received information from our third party administrator, Cigna, which is one of our business partners. And they provided information in regard to what we have been um, incurring in terms of what our expenses are for inpatient, outpatient, professional services, and so on and so forth. In addition to that, based on the cost analysis, we were able to look at some levers that would possibly help us uh, reduce the deficit, the 4.9 deficit that we have in our fa uh, <coughs> fund balance. And some of those levers include uh, further educating our population, our members, in terms of uh, establish a relationship with a primary care physician, uh, seek uh, treatment from a, sp a particular specialty, implement uh, the pharmacy formulary, the step th uh, therapy program, in addition to other wellness initiatives. In regard to the wellness initiatives, we visited uh, partnerships that we have established so far with our, some fitness centers in the area, which are EP Fitness, Planet Fitness, and Gold's Gym. Soon thereafter, around the, the second workshop held on January the 11th, it was brought up to our attention uh, to somewhat focus more so on phase one because at the initial uh, discussions, we administration brought over a multi-phase plan, a three-year plan. Though instead of looking at a three-year plan, we were um, presented with a task of bringing this in different phases. So at this point, during or as a result to that workshop held on January 24th, we were, uh, the suggestion was for us to bring phase one at this point and request the approval or consideration of increasing employee premiums depending, regardless of the level of coverage, excuse me, $20 across the board. In addition to that, there were some adjustments in terms of increasing deductibles and uh, co-payments uh, comparing the primary care physician co-pay to a specialty co-pay. During the uh, last workshop I mentioned on January 24th, we were asked to bring over the uh, numbers in terms of what is the level of coverage, how many uh, employees or membership we have under the premier, the base, and the high deductible plan. In addition to that, we were requested to bring information in regard to the groups in terms of uh, group type, administrative, teachers, technology, paraprofessionals, and auxiliary. Towards the end of the last session, and again during the workshop, we discussed the results we received from a survey held by, or conducted by TASB, which in not so many words, it comes down to what employers or school districts are doing through the area, is they're passing down the cost to their employees. So why bring all this information, as I mentioned in several meetings, uh, what we're trying to do is not, uh, bring our deficit, reduce our deficit all at once, but take it in phases to where we're able to uh, not have that much impact on our employees, their bottom line, and of course, the school district budget. At this point, my, that concludes my presentation. I don't know if there are any questions. Mr. Gunder. Mr. Reed. Uh, Mr. Carmona, yes, uh, you and the, the rest of the staff, I certainly, uh, right off the bat, want to thank you for all the extra hard work that you all did in trying to put this together. These are, as usual, are not popular decisions, and so uh, we know uh, it may impact employees uh, one way or the other, but we're hoping to maintain their health care and maintain things positive for them um, anyway. I realize that one of the reasons you're here so early is, and again, an effort to educate the employees early on, since we're going to have registration this summer, uh, they, they can make some decisions on their insurance coverage and so that they can plan 
I don't know, five, six months in advance that there will be a ten, uh, $20 increase on their plan. Um, I don't know if that's going to, in the long run, do it. I know that the school district, we're putting in also some funding in order to maintain uh, the health care program, and we may have to do that for some years. Uh, again, it's, an imp it's a, a big effort to minimize the impact on the employees on this health care cost that we know everything's going up. And when you look at that very first slide, you realize that uh, you, uh, certainly Mr. Reza and Dr. Espinosa, have done everything possible to try to keep this health care cost down. And, uh, but we're at a point that it needs to go up a little bit. And I think the, the most uh, responsible thing to do is to uh, affect this increase slowly, incrementally, so that employees don't have a big jump like has happened elsewhere. Uh, we still have an excellent health care program, and I, I'm proud to say that I think if our employees are real or their family are real, uh, they have very good coverage that hopefully will, will take care of their families. So I wanted to start out uh, thanking you uh, and, and the staff for, for all the hard work. Thank you, sir. I, I don't think it's going to be popular, so maybe not so much a, a question here as um, I, we, we did spend several workshops, uh, asked plenty of questions, and also talked about it at the committees. Um, I think it's probably a good idea at this point. I certainly would like to look at it in a year as we assess it, how, what we need to do for phase two and phase three. Maybe we'll be able to minimize it more then. Uh, maybe it'll be more bad news, I don't know. But um, rather than approve a three-year plan, maybe if we look at it here in the early going yearly, let's see if, um, how well we can sustain this, if we could. And if I may, Mr. A and members of the board, one uh, point that I forgot to mention is you're absolutely right. We're looking at increasing the employer contribution by $25 per month. So that will bring the current contribution of 550 up to 575. Uh, so okay. in hope that, you know, as you said, that we'll reduce our deficit and then revisit within a year and see what, what we are at that point experiencing. Right. Mr. Nagara? Mr. Nagara. Mr. Carbona, and, and, and um, our discussion to this point is, is only for phase one, right? Phase Correct. two and phase three will be revisited in future times, correct? That is correct, sir, yes. So we'll have the opportunity to see what the impacts of the increases are and um, hopefully through uh, our education efforts, our preventative care efforts, um, we'll be able to uh, maybe minimize um, the impact and, and maybe make some adjustments to phase two and phase three. That's that's what I'm hopeful for, but I do understand there's, there's, there's a lot of responsibility on the individual users um, you know, and, and, and I too, uh, I certainly understand sometimes um, when my daughters are sick, it's real quick uh, to take them to, uh, you know, to summit to an urgent care uh, or one of these, you know, 24 hour uh, ERs. Um, but the responsible thing to do, if it's not an urgent situation, is certainly take them to the pediatrician because it, it, it adds costs. And if I think about me as an individual, it doesn't add a lot of cost. Um, but, uh, you know, if we, you, you put all of us together, then, uh, of course, it, it adds costs. And, and that's the whole problem. When I say all of us together, of course, I'm talking about the entire healthcare system. You know, I happen to work in healthcare, so um, it, it's news that I follow, uh, certainly. Um, I do appreciate the fact that, that we're trying to move this. This has been, as part of the Finance Committee, we certainly receive reports on a monthly basis. Um, and this just has been an area of my concern, um, you know, for, for uh, some time now, simply because I see our expenditures, you know, going up and our reserves uh, not being sufficient. Um, so I, I know the costs are certainly uh, increasing and it makes, it, it just, I mean, it makes sense. You can't continue, um, you know, to inadequately fund a health plan or otherwise the health, the health plan goes away. Right. Um, and then sharing the cost, of course, uh, is there. Um, again, I do appreciate that it's a, a modest cost as well, and I know that, our, that the contributions from the district have gone up um, you know, by more than what we're asking the employees. It doesn't make it any less painful. It doesn't make <coughs> it any less pleasant, um, but something that, that, that we have to do you know, nonetheless. And I know my insurance plan went up. Um, it's, mine has gone up for the last three years. Um, beyond that, I can't remember. I just, uh, and I don't want to research and see, because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm likely to find that it's gone up each, uh, you know, time, every time. So, you know, but I do recall it's gone up the last three years. Um, but again, 
you know, a, a, a moderate increase as opposed to waiting three years from now and all of a sudden realizing, okay, we've got an increase in the hundreds, not, you know, in, in, in the low, in the $20 range there. So certainly appreciate that. Um, I appreciate all the effort that, that went into it. I know we asked a lot of questions and, um, you know, we, uh, when it was uh, first brought to us, we asked for some information and then more information and the more information we got, the more we asked for. Um, you know, but it is a good health plan um, and I certainly, um, you know, again, understand um, how important a health plan is, um, not just in when you're using it, but in order to retain um, and recruit, uh, you know, quality personnel as well. Um, so I realize the importance of that. Um, but, uh, you know, just thanks and, and Thank you, you know, hopefully we'll see um, some unexpected pleasant news uh, as, as it comes time to, to consider phase two and, and phase three. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Ayub, second by Mr. Nakada. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Down to item number C, consider approval of correction deed conveyance of land for public use. Mr. Ainton. I see the air, air condition is working now because <coughs> they're all yes. freezing over here. Yes, Mr. Gondola, uh, Dr. Espinosa. On page one, uh, 102 is a uh, item that has to do with uh, something that happened back in November, on uh, November the 15th in 2005. This was a piece of property or an easement that was conveyed to the uh, county, El Paso County, from our old Ed Center up to where Rojas is. It has to do, it had to do with that uh, light that went in at one time. If you recall years ago, back then, I, none of y'all were on the board, but there was, you know, Rojas stopped at Eastlake. It didn't go through. Mm -hmm. And then they started all the development. Uh, this was conveyed, uh, like I said, back in 2005, but through our research, uh, when they were researching it, they found out there was two tracks that were missed, that were not numbered correctly. So this is a recommendation for your consideration, a correction deed to that uh, piece of parcel that was conveyed back in 2005. Track 8E1 was previously conveyed to the state of Texas for uh, the benefit of a permanent school fund on October 11, 2000, uh, October 11, 1991. The 2005 D should have conveyed track E and track B. And through the research, in order to correct this, the title defect, Lone Star Title has agreed that a correction D changing the conveyance of track 8E and track 8B would resolve the uh, title defect. Uh, we are going to attain meets and bound descriptions on it, which is the normal way to do it on a, a correction deed. Our legal department, Mr. Mata, has been working on this. He has reviewed the uh, correction deed uh, that is attached. Uh, administration recommends consideration and approval of the correction deeds as presented. Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Ayn and by Mr. Guerra. Any further discussion? So Mr. Ayn all we're basically doing is honoring uh, or um, agreeing to honor the previous deeds as they were intended um, and as everybody understood. So we're just approving the correction so that the deed matches what should have happened to begin with, correct? That is correct. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Let's go down to item D. Consider approval of easement agreement between EP Summit Investment LLC and Socorro ISD. Mr. Ainton. Yes, as you recall, uh, some months ago, uh, the 
developer of the property behind the Ed Center approached us to, in order for us to get, uh, for us to grant them an access easement to that property off of East Lake. And there was, a, I think in your documents at the very back, you saw the uh, old site plan or the site plan of the Ed Center where it shows the access easement coming in there. They're granting us uh, an easement to tie into the sewer eventually. Uh, we're, that's the one of the few, or the only building I think that we still have on septic tank and, and, and gas and propane, so it would tie into gas service. It doesn't cost the district anything. They're making all the changes. They're making the modifications to the parking lot. They're actually grant giving us a little bit more parking spaces. They will actually allow us to, once that area is developed, if we still have that at center, we could park on their parking lot. <coughs> uh, so the deed has been, uh, or the easement has been prepared, reviewed by council. Uh, administration recommends uh, consideration and approval as presented. Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Guerra. Mr. Guerra. Mr. Guerra. <laughs> uh, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Mr. Gandara. Mr. Nahira. <laughs> Again, Mr. Ayrton, just to, to, to remind um, everybody, certainly um, this agreement, this granting of easement does a couple of things. Number one, it ties us in to uh, city water and, and gas lines, which we do not have right now, correct? That is correct. Okay, and, and then um, I certainly understand why the developer will want this access, being that it's right on the corner of uh, East Lake and I-10 without us providing um, the access uh, through the Ed Center there. Um, essentially, someone would have to go all the way to Horizon to come back to this location and return. So, uh, you know, certainly there's uh, definitely benefit there, but um, you know all the improvement, everything that's being changed, that's being tied in, tied in to uh, to the utility lines for the gas and water, etc. All that is completely um, without cost to the district, right? Inconvenience, maybe, yes, but not monetary <coughs> cost, right? That is correct. We are we do have the Horizon water already, so we're tied oh, okay, into the okay. water. It's the sewer and the gas. Okay, the sewer and the gas. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, so, uh, I mean, certainly there's lots of benefit to us, and um, uh, not only that, but uh, I believe it also makes the property more valuable there because, you know, we will have more parking, improved access, and everything else that, that goes with that. So, okay, makes sense to me. We do, we do have a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Candera. I'd like to make a motion to move item 10E and 10F to executive session. Second. There's a motion been made by Mr. A, second by Mr. Gonzalez, to move item E and F into executive session. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Let's go to item 11, executive session. This meeting is to be closed for consultation with legal counsel regarding ESD versus SISD lawsuit and proposed Settlement for ESD, uh, El Cortez, EEOC charge for number 451-2016-02353 and El Guerra versus SISD to discuss personal and real estate matters and to consider, there we go. <laughs> Uh, administrative recommendations for principal at O'Shea Callagher Elementary School under Texas Government Code Section 551.071-551.072 and 551.074. The time is 7.29. President Gondera, uh, just one clarification. Items E and F, the discussion in closed session is going to be under 551.071. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
Yes, sir. <clears throat> right. We're back out of the executive session. It is 835, item 10E, consider approval of contract uh, construction management at risk services for new elementary school, Ms. Dryington. Yes, President Gondor, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Uh, this agenda item has to do with our new uh, proposed uh, elementary school and to hire a construction manager at risk to help us through the design and ultimately the construction of the project. The administrative review committee met and reviewed the proposals that were uh, opened on January the 27th. The committee met uh, on February the 7th and, and basically came up with a recommendation. We had five proposers on the, uh, that proposed on the new elementary school. We decided to rank all five of them. And I believe a week or so ago, you got the alphabetical order of the people that uh, submitted their proposal. Tonight, uh, administration is recommended that uh, uh, Baines General con Contractor would be number one, Buford Thompson two, Dantex three, CF Jordan four, and Venegas Engineering number five. Per the policies and procedures that we adopted uh, back in uh, March of 2004, uh, the next step after the board approves would be that uh, myself and legal counsel would can, uh, come up with the negotiation and, and bring a contract to the board for approval. Administration recommends approval as, recommends to consideration of approval as submitted. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Trade, second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any further discussion? Mr. Gandra. Mr. Trade. Mr. Andre, I just want to know, this is an elementary school. What did we settle on the capacity of this school? How many students? No, 900 is a lot. No, so that would be, that would be, Chief who said that? Oh, you, no, that's. 851 is the maximum capacity and the functional capacity is 765. See? So 800. 800. Yeah. And I got to tell you, uh, for, for future, 800, we're pushing the maximum for an elementary school. Remember, elementary schools were these 400, 500 students. We went to six. We're at 800. When we're getting to 900, we're talking a middle school. And for elementary kids, little kids, and the, pri the priorities, we've got to do that. <coughs> I would be more supportive of building additional schools if some time we need it than these massive elementary schools. We're not going to go anywhere with that. So 800 is good. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Have a motion? Yes, All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's go to item 10 F. Consider approval of agreement between CBRE and SISD for broker services. Mr. Ainton. Yes, on page uh, 121 of your uh, booklet, uh, legal counsel and myself have been meeting with the uh, uh, firm that was selected uh, to uh, for us to negotiate for uh, the broker ser broker services uh, for the district, and we have a uh, uh, contract uh, attached if the board approves tonight. This, this will help us to uh, look at land purchases uh, for the various schools in the district, and it will also uh, help us if we decide to have any property for sale. Uh, we will basically work on a, the, the broker will work on a commission basis on a work order system that we will uh, generate and tell them that uh, we need X amount of square, uh, X, X amount of acreage for our elementary school or whatever piece of property uh, we are uh, looking for at that time. 
uh, administration would recommend approval of CBRE as the broker services. Motion to approve. Second. Second by Mrs. Rodriguez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item 12A. This is an impossible action regarding proposed settlement for ESD number one. Mr. Blanco. Uh, thank you, Board President Gondola, Dr. Espinosa. Members of the board, I gave you an update on uh, the ongoing litigation with the Emergency Services District number one, and they have returned with an additional proposal to resolve that litigation. I briefed you on that in closed session. It is my understanding that the board uh, is willing to consider additional negotiation with ESD number one, but not is not in agreement with the specific demand that has been made. So what I would ask is that you authorize uh, the administration with the council to contact ESD number one's lawyer and continue the negotiations on the terms discussed in closed session. And if we can reach an agreement, that will be finalized at the March meeting. Motion for uh, district council to continue to negotiate with ESD one. Second. Motion has been made, Mr. And Mr. Ayub, seconded by Mr. Gales. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 12B, decision and possible action regarding El Cortez EOC charge number 451-2016-02353. Mr. Blanco. Um, thank you, Board President Gahn, the uh, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. I gave you an update on this EEOC charge as well. Um, Ms. Cortez is a former teacher who was terminated by the district and went through the appeal process. She has now filed an EEOC charge, and I want to make it clear that the briefing that we gave to the board is simply a demand for Ms. Cortez to settle her EEOC charge and any possible lawsuit now at this early stage for what is a low sum. And so it's our recommendation from a strictly financial perspective that the board consider accepting the demand that was made by Ms. Cortez. If you're willing to do so, we would need a motion to authorize the administration of the council to complete the settlement on the terms discussed in closed session. So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Nakeda, seconded by Mrs. Rodriguez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 12C, decision and possible action regarding El Guerra versus SISD. Mr. Blanco. Um, thank you, Board President Gondara, Dr. Espinosa, members of the board. Again, another piece of litigation. This seemed to be the litigation month, unfortunately. Um, Ms. Guerra is a former teacher for Socorro Independent School District, and we held a mediation, myself and Mr. Campoya, regarding her pending lawsuit against the district. She has made a demand for settlement we don't recommend that the board accept the demand that was made, which I briefed you about in closed session, but the board, if you're willing to consider authorizing us to return and make a counter offer to Ms. Guerra, which we would bring back to the board if they accept um, on the terms discussed in closed session at the March meeting. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Nakara, second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 12D, consider approval of administrative recommendation for Principal <coughs> O'Shea Kelleher, Dr. Espinosa. Yes, President Gandra and members of the board, at this time, administration recommends Ms. Josie Perez to assume all the roles and the responsibilities as the principal of O'Shea Kelleher Elementary. Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Ayub, seconded by Ms. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I Motion. abstain. And one abstention. You guys really want to go home already? <laughs> <laughs> there won't be any, uh, there's no more items on the agenda. This meeting is now over at 844.